Good morning, everyone. I got a big hello from the, uh, the sanctuary. Feel free to everybody unmute and say good morning to each other, please. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. I, I see some people, shy people are waving and a couple people are like, come on, shout it out. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. People are quiet, it's rainy. All right, well, welcome everybody, whether you are here in the sanctuary and we're a quiet sanctuary group today. I think the rain is among many other things, having people stay home and safe and warm and comfortable. Although we had some folks show up at the pavilion this morning for our eight o'clock outdoor gathering. We also know people are traveling. You know, it's summer, it's busy. There are a lot of different kinds of commitments happening. So we're glad that you have been able to find time in your weekend to join us. And for those who are on the road or elsewhere, you know, our thoughts are always with our beloved friends and family, wherever they may be. And we still have people pulling in because we are the church of not even just in time right now. <laughs> That's okay. We love each other. Alan is back from his vacation. So we, we know we are grateful. There's applause going on in the sanctuary. Can't hear it unless there's a, a microphone aimed at it, but we're, we're happy to have him back and have live music. And I think we have a couple of other announcements here. There's no council meeting this month. Last week we announced, we're just gonna keep reminding people, there are two walks coming up in September. They're both on the same day. One is the Jen's Friends climb at Cranmore, and the other is an Alzheimer's walk. Jeanette has an active team that's forming to do that walk over in Maine. So we encourage you to contact us if you want to be part of the church team for the Jen's Friends walk or connect directly with Jeanette. You'll find this information in the newsletter that we sent out for July about how to register and be part of either of these walks. We're supporting causes that touch our community very deeply. There is a golf tournament scheduled for August 17th. Um, I'm gonna just say it feels a bit up in the air right now, whether this is gonna successfully get pulled off. It would be great if it does, but um, if you're an avid golfer, raise your hand in the next week to become a golf course. And otherwise I think we're gonna just reimagine the whole thing and possibly consider it for next year. And any other announcements that anyone else might have for the life of the church? Anybody here in the sanctuary? Anybody in Zoom that has an announcement that you wish to make? I was asked about the dates of those walks, and they're both on September 18th. Okay, September 18th. That's a Saturday for anybody that's not sure of that. And if you can't participate, you can support by being a sponsor for either of those walks. There are many ways to, you know, show your care. So any way that you wish to help us support responses to Alzheimer's and to cancer, we appreciate Now that we have the joy of having Alan back here in the sanctuary, we're going to have the pleasure of his wonderful live music to help us center ourselves. So whether you are in the sanctuary or you're at home, I invite you please to put your feet on the floor. Perhaps open your hands and put them on your lap and relax. If you're comfortable doing so, close your eyes and simply listen and give yourselves the opportunity to come into this gathering and to be present here in this time and this moment.
Open your eyes and return to your awareness of your surroundings. Whether you are in Zoom or here in the sanctuary, you can participate in the call to worship. You will find the call to worship in your bulletin if you're here in the sanctuary. You'll see the words up on the screen if you are participating through Zoom. We are blind to many things. Lord, cure our blindness. The light of God shines for us today. Lord, pour that light on us. Come and worship God who forgives and heals your blindness. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, that we might see opportunities to serve you. Amen. From this opening call to worship, we turn then to our prayers. And we begin with those prayers that our community lifts up either out loud or in silence. A few of the prayer concerns that were already raised at the eight o'clock gathering this morning include gratitude for the life of Kate, who died this week, a friend of one of our members. Chris and I add the gratitude for the life of our friend John, who also died in hospice this week. We lift up the nation of Germany and the flooding that's happening there and the way it has devastated communities. We lift up Indonesia, which is now bearing the brunt of COVID's effect. 10% or less of the population are vaccinated and the vaccine they have is not very effective. And much like India, those people who go to the hospital for assistance, they have to do things like bring their own oxygen. Hundreds of thousands of people are being affected daily. COVID is not over. It feels different here because our lives are beginning to open up again. But even in our nation, there are places that are experiencing surges and shutdowns. Let us not assume that life is completely back to normal, but hold in prayer, in thought, and in action. Those places that continue to be deeply affected and changed by this global pandemic. We think also of those communities that are experiencing fires, whole states, Montana, Oklahoma, and California, to name a few, that have been affected. One of our members' sons is working in Montana, and he reports that the mountains are orange because of the reflection of the distant fires and the smoke is everywhere around him. This is a common story, and it affects our own families, our own friends, including those who go to these fires to respond to them and those who live in these places. May we hold our earth, our people, in our prayers as we think about climate change itself and the different effects that cause things like flooding and fires. Are there any prayer requests for concerns or worries here in the sanctuary? If so, we're going to offer you the microphone. So raise your hand if you do have such a concern. All right. Sandra is going to share a concern with us. Um, we appreciate all your continued prayers. Um, please continue to pray with us. Um, Rich starts a more intense chemotherapy regime this Wednesday. Um, and we're all hoping that this one's going to help. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for trusting us with that. So for Richard and for all those who are affected and in active treatment right now for different forms of cancer, the paths of each person with such a diagnosis are quite different and the outcomes can also be different, but we know that cancer in one form or another affects so many lives. And so Richard at the moment for us is one face of what it looks like to live with 
and journey through this diagnosis. And so let us uphold Sandra and Richard and their family. Other prayers here in the sanctuary. Are there prayers in Zoom? If so, please unmute and feel free to share. I guess just continued prayers for Sanity and her search for a church here so she can connect with people in the community a little bit better. I know this is just kind of hard for her to, to do this because she loves you guys so much, but I know it'll be good for her to actually get um, connected there where she's at. Yeah. So for the, you know, as COVID wanes and people are resettling their lives in new and different places we are we continue to be a spiritual home for people in regardless of distance but we also know that people need to put down roots where they are and so where and how people choose to do that we support your growth your sense of home it doesn't mean you're leaving us it means you're growing your family we're always here and there are always ways to remain connected, but it is healthy to have real live relationships with real live people right where you are, if that's at all possible. Other prayers of concern in Zoom. Arden, do you have something? No, I'm fine. Actually, I was thinking about I was thinking about Barbie and um, and all of the people who are facing decisions about uh, leaving and making a space at at the, at the time of life where you you know you're letting go and, um, and it's it's scary. Um, so I, I guess uh, just prayers for Prayers for people who are in that particular uh, state. In transition, Arden, thank you. Right, so thank you. Again, we have members who are in transition, people like Barbie who are considering a change in where they will be living and with whom they'll be living. Uh, people who help their loved ones move into different and safer residential settings and things like that. There are so many ways that in our lives we make these transitions and that there is a letting go when this happens. And there's an adapting to the new place, the new circumstances of your life. We as human beings are constantly being called upon to make these changes and they're difficult. And so Arden brings to the forefront of our minds within her own family and so many families, Bar our friend Barbie, the transitions that are happening for people. We always need to turn our faces towards hope and celebration and gratitude as we carry with us or put down those things that we have named as concerns. And so what celebrations and gratitudes do you have this weekend that you want to share. Alan's got one for us. Um, well, as you know, I went to the Southwest uh, for vacation and they get the most rain in three years in the Grand Canyon, four tenths of an inch. Doesn't sound like much, but for the Grand Canyon and that whole area, that's a lot. <laughs> so it happened while I was there, it was pouring. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, Alan. For <laughs> for rain in the southwest in the Grand Canyon. Yeah, All right. Well, there's a drought over there. So just want <laughs> yeah, to bring that up. every bit of rain. And there's <laughs> drought conditions here too. It doesn't feel like it right now, but we've been warned. So we need this rain. It's it's a gift. Other prayers of gratitude or celebration here in the sanctuary. Then I invite those in Zoom. If you have anything you would like to share, we would love to hear from you. Alan? Hi, Gail. Um, Austin and I are here to offer up a prayer of gratitude for the church and their support of the youth who achieved learning milestones this spring or summer. 
Um, Austin graduated middle school and Hunter graduated grammar school, and they both received a very meaningful gift and card from the church. So thank you very much. You are part of our beloved community and we continue to figure out how to be community together. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, everybody in your Hunter, in your family for acknowledging. Um, we, we send those gifts because we appreciate your presence and you are important to us. <laughs> Other prayers of celebration of gratitude in Zoom. Meg, go for it. Um, I am very grateful for my husband. We've been married 51 years today. And I can't believe it's been that long, but it's been a wonderful 51 years. Oh, she's, she's getting emotional. Lee, I hope you heard that. <laughs> 50 plus one, that's pretty great. <laughs> so for milestones, for the milestones that Alan named, for Hunter and Austin of moving up into different grade levels for the celebration of milestones such as anniversaries like Meg and Lee are celebrating for milestones of anniversaries of sobriety or birthdays. The, the different ways that we celebrate what it means to live and be together in community and to be in relationship with one another we give thanks for these opportunities and COVID has taught us as have things like cancer and Alzheimer's and our other experiences taught us to savor and appreciate each other and the chance to have time together and to make meaning from it. Well, I, I give thanks because my grandmother, who I announced was on hospice last week, had graduated from hospice. So there you go. Sometimes hospice takes such good care of people that people rebound, and <laughs> that's a good thing. I'm not surprised my grandma could do it. Let us pray. O oh God of rain, which is falling here in Jackson, which surprised the people in the Grand Canyon, which is so desperately needed in places where there are fires and droughts. O oh God, who quenches our deep spiritual, emotional mind thirst, we ask for your presence in all the healing and the holy ways that you see us and that you love us and that you are present to us. We are your children, and you have told us that we are your body. And so as we pray together with gratitude for lives that have gone ahead of us, with hope for lives that are in your keeping right now, we ask that you will feel the touch that we offer by placing our hands upon a part of our own bodies, our hearts, or our heads, or wherever healing needs to happen. And we pray we pray for each other, for Huntley's heart, for Scamp's body, for Kate's life, for Richard's body, for Kevin's mental health, for those who become for us the face of entire experiences, for the love of Ray and Arden, for the faithfulness of Megan Lee, for the courage of Kate and Sandy to make new lives in new places and know what that means and show us how to come out of the wilderness and find home again and create home where we are. For those we love, for babies yet to be born, for dreams that are just being planted, oh holy God, we place our hands on our bodies and we pray for the body of your people, for the body of this earth that groans and hurts and surprises us with wondrous miracles at the same time. And we release our hands and we release our voices and we offer our voices together up to you. If you're in Zoom, please unmute. As we say together, our Father, 
who art in heaven, art in heaven. Hallowed, be hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Thy will be, thy will done. be, will be done on earth as, on earth as, as it, it is in heaven, heaven. Give, us this give us this day our, our daily, bread. Bread. daily bread and forgive us and forgive our sins, sins as we forgive, as we forgive, we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen and with gratitude for live music, we lift up the first song of the morning. It's song Amazing Grace. Now you have the choice. Uh, it's actually four verses, Alan, because of the extra verse in the insert. If you want to turn to your hymnal, if you're here in the sanctuary, it's number 402. But there's also an insert in your bulletin, so you can read from there. And if you're in Zoom, we're placing the words up on the screen. We added a different... Uh, verse this morning the fourth verse is a newer one that is really meaningful for some people and uh, we're praying you know this well enough because we're going to ask you to stay muted if you're in zoom and here in the sanctuary lift up your voices enthusiastically and sing along with alan <laughs> That fourth verse, not sure about the fourth verse. I don't think the syllables match up, so I think we might let that one go in the future. Please be seated if you're in the sanctuary. These guys are remembering the rhythms of actually being in the sanctuary, and they, they remind themselves to stand up. <laughs> we're, still, we're still learning how to be a body of Christ together in the same place yet. Our reading this morning talks about healing the blind. And when we get to the sermon, I will make a few notes about that. But let's begin with the story itself. These are excerpts from John 9. It's quite a long passage, but we're going to give you the meat of the story. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light 
of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? The religious authorities did not believe that he'd been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them. So for the second time, they called the man who'd been blind and they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they, the authorities, reviled him, saying, You're his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man who had been blind answered, Here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. Jesus, and then he continues with the authorities, and the authorities say to him, we know that God does not listen to sinners, and he does listen to one who worships him, and uh, it's the blind man talking to us, sorry, I'm starting again. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. The authorities answered him, you were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man who had been blind answered, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. And the man who had been blind said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The group that attended the five o'clock study on Friday got the longer version of this. This, The authorities interrogated the man who had been born blind, his parents, quite extensively. And they were frightened to answer the authorities because they knew that if they told what had happened to their son and that they were considered to be followers of Christ, they would actually be exiled from their community, from the temple, from their Jewish community. The authorities were trying to find reasons not to believe that this had even happened. First, they tried to discredit the man who had been born blind. They were looking for evidence that he was faking it, that he hadn't always been blind. And then they started saying, well, you know, he must have been sinful. He must have been this. He must have been wrong. And meanwhile, Christ is saying his healing has nothing to do with his goodness or his sin, nor his parents' goodness or his sin. This is an act of God. God can change people who are imperfect and restore to them a gift that they need to be different and whole in the world. And then this man, who in some ways couldn't see the world at all, has a deeper insight and perception than the authorities who are challenging him because he can see that even though he can't facially identify the person that touched his face, put mud in his eyes, someone who has a connection to holistic love and redemptive healing touched him and changed him. And he knows that if that happened, that love was present in that act. And God must have been there and blessed it 
and given permission for this gift to occur. And somehow the authorities are so locked in their structure, in their world, in the way things are, they can't see past their everyday expectations to the transformation that has taken place in front of them. But the one who had never seen the world understood from the inside out that change had happened and that it was a forever kind of change. It's really important for us to understand that just because you're blind or deaf or different in some way, you are not broken. In ancient tradition, an external illness was often a sign or considered to be a sign that you were somehow corrupt or less than good on the inside, that your mind or your heart needed repair, or that perhaps you were beyond any form of redemption. We know now that there are physiological reasons for physical conditions like blindness, like deafness, like the changes in people's cognition or mobility or the way their bodies work, what they're able to do and how they do things differently from the rest of us. If you talk to somebody who lost their hearing and they've been in a non-hearing community their entire lives, most of these communities are vital and holistic and nobody thinks of themselves as broken or damaged. They understand that there's a hearing world and there's a non-hearing world and that sometimes we who can hear think that we're damaged when we lose that sense, but those who have learned how to live wholly without it, don't miss it. The same can be true of sight or any other capacity that we have. To be different isn't to be broken. And how we are reconnected to our community doesn't mean that we're broken and somebody had to fix us. It simply means that we were separated from ourselves or others in some way. And that is the act of love showing up sometimes with a physical touch, mud in your eye. Here's some mud in your eye that changed in this story, a man's capacity to see the world physically, but he already saw the world so wisely. And he was already teaching the authorities or at least attempting to. And his words and his teaching, his experience with that love has been handed down to us because he already saw deeply and differently. And it's an invitation for all of us to look newly, differently at our lives. At the eight o'clock this morning, we talked about how much this story parallels for so many of us, the experience of COVID. How could we possibly think that when we emerge from this global experience, we're gonna go back to the way things were. I don't think any of us expect that anymore. And to adapt, we've had to embrace the gifts that came with this incredibly challenging and horrific illness. We have been catapulted into different ways of connecting and being community. Look at this church, look at Zoom. Look at how we have found ways to include more people that we didn't even realize we needed to. In the past, if you had cancer and low counts, you would simply stay home. If you were lucky, maybe you got to listen to some television broadcast, but you didn't get to zoom into your own home church. But now, now we know the importance of being community regardless of what might separate us. We look at the world differently. After drought, we're grateful for lots and lots of rain. After times when we couldn't get together, every chance to celebrate a milestone with your friends or have a small family reunion or touch the face of a loved one becomes a gift. We see the world differently because we have come to know how important love's presence among us and with us is. 
Let us take the lesson of the story of someone whose life was changed because his eyes were healed. He was already connected to this world and wise, but he learned more along the way. And he changed the people around him and handed his story down. And the love that he experienced, he continued to witness to. And those who heard his story witnessed to it. Their witnessing becomes a storytelling that becomes our stories now. How have you heard about love showing up in the lives of people around you and changing the way we see each other or the world? I said it last week and I say it with every healing story. We are the heart and the mind of God in this world. We are the voices of God in this world, and we are the hands and feet. We are the tangible, measurable, stubborn love of God in this world. If God is acting, God is acting through us. If love is present, love is present through us. And like a person that can be healed even though they're not perfect, we don't have to be perfect to be the servants and the agents of change and love. We simply have to permit love to be present to us, to receive it, and then to offer it. Brothers and sisters, today when you touched your body and you said the prayer of the Christ's body, you were becoming agents of love. And now as we go out, from our gathering today, may we also remember our lives have been changed by COVID, but the power that is greater still than anything, than cancer or Alzheimer's, than anything that challenges our bodies is love. Love abides and endures beyond all things. And no matter how short or long the lives of those we love may be, we have been changed because their love has changed us. May we carry the love of those who have changed us and may our love change others so that we see each other and offer each other God's holy presence. Thanks be to God. We come to that time in the service when we, in the old tradition, in the old days, we would have passed the plate around. Right now, we're still being a little bit cautious, so we leave a plate out in front of the sanctuary or a basket by the back door. And we ask that people put pledges in their envelopes if they're here and they can. Or if you're in Zoom, you can mail in whatever kind of contribution you have made a commitment to share with us, or you can go on jxncc.org and make a donation. In all the ways, through your time and your gifts and also your giving, you help us continue to be love present in this world, and you make a difference, and we thank you. So appropriately, our second song of the morning is Be Thou My Vision. For those in the sanctuary, that song 445, if you want to try it from the hymnal. Otherwise, the words are there on your screen, and please rise for this song if you are able.
for the benediction. The words for that are in your bulletin or you'll find them on your screen. And Alan, are you good to play it live? We're playing it live, yay, for the first time since COVID started, I think. If you're in Zoom, feel free to hang out for some chat afterwards. And if you're here in the sanctuary, you can greet each other after a little interlude by Alan. But please go in peace. Mm -hmm. 